Hey folks, Carl Willis here. Hope everybody is having a good winter holiday, finally. Um, in this video, we're going to be exploring the most important Christmas story in modern physics, the discovery of nuclear fission. On December 22nd, 86 years ago, two German chemists submitted a paper describing the radioactivity they found in uranium that had been exposed or irradiated with neutrons. And a couple weeks after that, this phenomenon was given a theoretical explanation by Lisa Meitner. And of course, we know the importance of nuclear fission in our world today. So we're going to take a look at the fission process using the modern tool of gamma spectroscopy. We're going to irradiate a small piece of natural uranium in our um, AGN-201M nuclear reactor here at the University of New Mexico. Throw it on the gamma spectrometer. Look at the various fission products that result. Now there are hundreds of fission products and our experiment's only going to introduce us to a few of them, or at least my patience level is only going to tolerate looking at a few of them. Um, but uh, they each have their own little story. And some of them actually are very important and have you know, uses that, that uh, are worth knowing about. We're looking now at a gamma radiation energy spectrum from our natural uranium that we just cooked. So we cooked it for about half an hour and we've let it decay a little bit, an, about two hours. Um, and this is the spectrum that we're getting at this point in time. In this discussion, I'll be ignoring the peaks um, resulting from the decay of Neptunium-239. So this is radiative capture product on uranium. Probably a story for another day, uh, but I'm focusing now on the fission products. Uh, the most important fission product in the hours following irradiation you can see right here is barium-139. Keeping in mind this is a logarithmic scale. This Barium-139, this was noticed by Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann in 1938. And they called it radium-3 because of it, you know, chemically behaved like radium. And under the, the physics of the day, they assumed originally that uranium was somehow turning into radium, which is a similar atomic weight. Um, but, but at this point, they were good enough chemists to know that it really was barium. And what they couldn't explain was any mechanism that created barium from uranium under neutron bombardment. So that task um, would end up falling to Lisa Meitner and Otto Frisch in early 1939, and then the rest is history from there. Pay attention now to the xenon-135 peak, which I've highlighted in green. The most prominent gamma-emitting fission product after a few hours have passed is xenon-135. It's getting stronger, so it's growing in from its parent, iodine-135, and uh, that peak's also labeled at the high energy end of the spectrum. Xenon-135 plays an important role in nuclear reactor dynamics and control because it is a potent absorber of neutrons, a neutron poison. Another noble gas product of interest here is Krypton-87. Krypton-87 uh, is sometimes formed in such a highly excited state by the fission process um, that it sheds a neutron. So the bromine-87 actually uh, decays to this super excited uh, Krypton state and it just immediately sheds a neutron. So we have this decay delayed neutron. And these, these sorts of de delayed neutrons are of the utmost importance in nuclear reactor kinetics and basically make nuclear reactors controllable, at least on a human time scale. Uh, the gamma rays that we are seeing in this spectrum are the result of Krypton-87 decays that do not involve emitting the neutron, however. So this is the the road not taken if, if, uh, if you do decay by emitting a neutron there. So iodine-131 is highlighted in violet, and it's also growing in from its precursors. And it comes into prominence a couple days after irradiation. Some other stuff have decayed out of the way at this point also. This isotope has many medical uses. It's very unwelcome, however, if it's released in an uncontrolled manner during nuclear accidents. So it's biologically active, it gets into your thyroid, and when we talk about protecting people with prophylactic iodine after nuclear accidents, we're talking about protecting them mostly from iodine-131. 
Finally, uh, lanthanum 140 emerges late after growing in from its 12-day um, uh, barium 140 precursor. This is another classic fission product, if you will, uh, meaning first noticed by Hahn and Strassmann. Uh, and they called it actinium-4. And then with Meitner's theory under their belt, it became understood that it was really lanthanum. This is one of the first fission products to actually have an application. This was used for uh, fast gamma radiography in the Manhattan Project. They used it to look at the density of imploding spheres. You can see where this is going. Um, and uh, this was done at the TA-10 site up at Los Alamos, which is now uh, a publicly accessible area. And uh, again, probably a story for another day. Thank you for watching. Hope everybody has a wonderful uh, winter holiday and a good start to the new year.